do. I promise. We, okay. I do. What's that? We're back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Our guest is District Attorney General Glenn Funk talking about the Travis uh, Ryan King trial. Of course, he was uh, recently just convicted after a, a week-long trial and will spend the rest of his life behind bars. And uh, just talking about some of the evidence and the, the case, how it played out, uh, kind of fascinating to hear, you know, now the gag order lifted, I suppose, or you wouldn't be here chatting with me, but uh, so much we didn't know until the trial came about. Right. Um, we had someone wait through the break. Let's take uh, Brian real quick. Brian, good morning. Hi, Brian. What's on your mind? Oh, no, not much. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm glad to see you feeling better over there, General. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate right. it. Feel great. I, you don't have the mask on. <laughs> well, we're separated here, but we have masks when we come into the building, sure. I'll eat a, okay. Uh, what I wanted to ask is, what happened to Thomas Thurman? Is he still uh, working in your office? Uh, funny, we just talked about the Terminator, right. which, uh, right. <laughs> former prosecutor, go ahead. T Tom retired in 2016. He'd been the deputy DA under uh, the previous administration under Tory Johnson for roughly 20, 25 years. Uh, when I became district attorney, I obviously kept someone with that type of wisdom and experience. And uh, so he stayed deputy DA. He was really ready to retire even in 2014, but because he was so involved in the Vanderbilt rape case, mm -hmm. uh, right. he wanted to make sure he saw that to its conclusion. He was able to get it tried, and, and you know, as it turned out, we had to try that case four times. <sighs> Uh, he tried it the first time, uh, and after that first conviction, he went ahead and retired. Uh, I think he knew that uh, the rest of the trial team had it, but he did want to make sure that he gave the victim you know, his complete support. And, and so he, st he stayed with the office all the way through there and then, and then retired. So uh, right now he is splitting his time between Tennessee and Florida and uh, doing great. Yep, he and Tom his wife, well. Debbie. De Debbie's amazing and uh, uh, certainly well-deserved to be able to spend some time with her. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, I'm glad you updated us on how he was doing. Um, you know, during the commercial break, I was asking him about, you know, um, some of the evidence used against uh, Travis Ryan King, and we did see some of his own video clips that he posted of himself to show kind of some of his state of mind at one point. Were there recordings of him um, in interrogations or questions with police right after his arrest? Uh, we didn't see any of that, and how, whether you could play that or not. Right, well, the, the police brought him down to the South Precinct and attempted to ask him questions to get him to give a statement. Okay. Um, at that point, they gave him his Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to have a lawyer with you. If you choose to you know, you, you give up your right, then you can uh, stop talking at any time. If you cannot afford a lawyer, uh, one will be appointed for you. At that point, he asked for a lawyer, right? And that's on, that's on tape, right? He, he asked for a lawyer. Now, normally in any type of trial, you cannot bring up the fact that somebody asked for a lawyer or somebody said, no, I don't want to talk to you, invoke their rights, because you can't use the invocation of a right against somebody, right? And that's, that, you know, that's taboo. You okay. cannot bring it up. It came up in this trial briefly, right, because it was not about whether he did the act or not. It was about whether or not he appreciated the wrongfulness. Well. Mm -hmm. If I don't appreciate the wrongfulness, you know, I'm going to sit there at, right. at the bar and order up some hash browns, right? right. I'm, I, you know, yeah, I just killed all these people, but I'm ready to eat, right? If, if, I, if I truly don't appreciate, I don't run away, I don't change clothes, I don't shower, I don't pack a bag, I don't try to get out of the area, I don't, I don't do anything. But when I'm arrested, if I don't realize I've done anything wrong, yeah, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. What, 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 yeah. The fact that he asked for a lawyer indicated, in, in our opinion, that, and in, in, in tried to make that point briefly to the jury, that uh, that he appreciated the wrongfulness. Otherwise, why would he need a lawyer to protect him if he hadn't done anything wrong? So we brought it up, but we didn't want to overplay it. And at the same time, the judge was like, all right, y'all made your point. Let's not put that into evidence. Is that one of the same reasons? There was a reference to it briefly with one of the witnesses about him contacting a member of the media, which was me. Did you right. aware of that snippet? Right. Well, yeah, I am aware of that snippet. And, of course, I thought that that indicated that, uh, that he did not have that strong of a mental 
health issue because he obviously recognized that you are the number one journalist in the city. So, um, yeah, there we go. I did not pay him to say that. Yeah, and, and so, <laughs> yeah. and so choosing you, but yeah. you're, you're right. I mean, we could have used that snippet as well. Because right? he basically said, oh, I asked him about his mental state, I think, and he said something along the lines, oh, yeah, I'm fine. And he was talking about maybe representing himself. So I, and I'm not saying that would have played any role in it necessarily, but that was one of the few times you heard him talk. Right. But it just, you, it, it wasn't germane. Is that basically right. it? It right. wouldn't have, no, no I, help there. I, I, we, we, as far as his phone call to you, we did not feel like that advanced the ball on the issue that we wanted to focus. We didn't want any distractions. We wanted to make sure that people could focus on, here's how we know that he appreciated the wrongfulness. It wasn't that he was cognizant of this or cognizant of that or knew how to actually contact, contact media. It was about the fact that he wrote ahead of time that he was going to try to have a, a, an insanity defense, that he was already talking about a mass killing, the fact that he put you know, three clips of 30 bullets apiece in there, the fact that he went there and he killed and then he had to step over mm -hmm. right, Joe Perez's corpse to get into this, the fact that he, when he got done shooting every, every bullet in the first clip that he was changing out clips, the fact that he ran away, the fact that when he ran away he went straight home and showered and changed clothes and got uh, his supplies to be able to try to escape the area. I mean, he had, you know, water bottles. He had another gun. He had bullets in this backpack. Mm -hmm. He had silver bars that if he could have gotten out of the area to another city, he could have traded those silver bars and gotten cash. Now, if you go to another city and use a credit card, right, well, instantly the credit card hits and we know where you are. Right? If you go and you use an ATM card, well, we know where you use your ATM card and we're going to find you that way. But if you walk into a, a, a metals dealer and you say, here's this bar, and they say, okay, great. Well, the value of that bar is you know, $200, $200. Here's $200, and here's the bar. Okay, great. What did, he, what did he use to purchase the bars? Did he use credit card? A Do check. You know? He used a check. Yeah. Okay, so he needed currency. Because I was going to say, well, if he right. could just have currency, that's fine, too. Right. But so you're thinking is, uh, we all thought, well, that's if he leaves the country or something. But I guess you're right. It could be used locally. A silver bar is, like you said, you go right in, untraceable, just boom. Yeah. What do you give me for the silver bar? Yeah. Huh. I have to say, that was so, just so, so curious. So there, there, were, there were a lot of these factors. Yeah. And we wanted to focus on that. Makes because sense. if we got off on tangents, mm -hmm. right? Then, then when we talk in front of a jury, we want every word of ours to be important to the issue in the case, right? Yeah. And we don't want we don't want our words to kind of cause the jurors to kind of glaze over in their attention. We want look if we're speaking, by golly, it's important because we're talking about what matters in this case. And so we couldn't go off on those tangents. Everything was focused on that issue. First, prove that he did it, right, and then be able to prove that his defense. Uh, was not a valid defense. Take a quick break on that note. A few more phone calls. Uh, boy, I could talk to you all day about this trial, but we have one more segment with our guest, Glenn Funk. We'll try to get some calls, continue our conversation right after this. Stay with us.